see you. You guys have been playing full out. Amazing. You know what I heard? I was backstage talking to Brent and a bunch of people. I heard there's no dabblers in this room. Is that true? You know, you've had amazing speakers. You guys have a lot on your mind. I've been in real estate for a long time. I get it. In a phase like this, when the world shifts, we can get in our heads for sure. And my whole goal for the next 25 minutes or so is to get you out of your head and into your heart and show you that this is probably one of the greatest opportunities rather than a time to be scared. And here's another thing. Who remembers who was doing this in 07? All right, look at all those amazing hands. Who remembers who was left standing at the end of 07? Who'd like the dabblers who just got lucky during COVID to just move aside, right? And, and the fact of the matter is, we know this. In times like this, and, and heck, you got Tony Robbins coming up here soon, he's gonna rock your world. But Tony says, we have two options, right? Our brain can focus on what's wrong, what's missing, or we can focus on opportunity or what's right. I know that's simple and you've had amazing speakers to share that. But if you really think about it, this is the time to fall in love with being uncomfortable, right? This is a time to stretch our mind. This is a time to grow. This is not a time where you get to put a listing up and 47 people are fist fighting over it, right? And the people who can't shift their mind, the people that can't and won't come to an event like this or gain new capabilities, they're gonna get frustrated and that little voice inside their head's gonna say, this isn't for you anymore. Let them go, right? In times like this, we have to fortify our mind, stay plugged in, do whatever it takes to keep us focusing on where things can go. In 2007, I was not only in real estate, I was real in real estate education, and the world shifted completely. If you guys, those of you that raised your hands, every third house was for sale, every fifth house had a foreclosure sign on it. And during that time, I did an exercise that I'm gonna go over with you guys today. You guys up for a quick exercise that changed my life? Okay, I did an exercise then, I've been doing it for about 15 years and I can't wait to share that with you. But during that exercise, I had such a breakthrough, such an epiphany on my why that I wanted to do this and where I was going that I fundamentally shifted everything. I shifted my education to help real estate agents. 2007, 2008, 2009, I bought a thousand houses in those three years, right? But besides that, my real estate education business exponentially grew because I shifted my thoughts. I got comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that's the part I wanna share with you today. I switched, my education shifted to sell to landlords, sell to people who wanted to buy houses at discount. You guys are gonna have your own strategy and we'll come up with you know, some, uh, some strategies on that today or the thought process of it. But that shift, when no one else shifted, when everybody else was complaining, everybody else was worrying, everybody else was doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, I just shifted. I gained the confidence. I learned from Tony Robbins and so many others that empowered me. And by 2009, I had an extra thousand houses and my real estate brand was the number one in the world. I don't say that to brag. I just want to show you what's possible because you guys are the players. You're not the dabblers. You are the ones that are going to shift, and I give you all the credit in the world to be here. All right, so before I get into this quick exercise, I thought I would share three different things that I know empowered me in 99 when I was in business and empowered me in 2007 and will empower you now. The first one is step up the love. I know that sounds crazy. Who in here has ever read Ogman Dino's The World's Greatest Salesman? Look at all those hands, right? I'm going to make this really quick. Fall in love with your clients even more. Love might seem like a word that's too foo-foo. Then step up the caring, step up the service, go deeper. People are going to be more concerned than ever, ever before in their lives. We had a couple of years of COVID and now high inflation and possible recession. Things are shifting. People are going to be scared. So be the person that loves them more, that cares more, that provides a deeper service. And then the last one provides such an amazing service that you feel bad if they use anyone else. And what that does is make you want to market and push harder because you know if they don't use you, they're using someone else who's just dabbling. And you guys agreed you're not dabblers. So number one, it's really quick. Step up the love, okay? 
Number two, and this one's really important, the art of messaging. I've been pretty fortunate. Tony and I have done some pretty cool things. We just got done with a challenge we did. We had 900,000 people attend. Is that pretty amazing? From 156 countries. And most of the reason they're in that room, the most of the reason I'm standing up here in front of you guys is because I've obsessed on the art of messaging for a very long time. And I want to give you some bullets and I'm going to go pretty quick here. Number one, when the world shifts, even before it shifts, we must enter conversations going on in the mind of our prospect or client now. So add the word. Let me just ask you something. Has your conversation at your dinner table changed in the last six months? Raise your hand if your dinner conversation has changed. Talking about interest rates. Are they going up another point in October? Is this going to cause a hard recession, a half a recession? We are having different conversations now than we did six months ago. Then why would people still be treating your prospects and your clients the same way? Using the same messages now. Their conversation changed, so we must enter a conversation they're having now. Not six months ago, not before COVID, not six months from now. I'm not trying to oversimplify it, but most people get in a routine. Most people get a sales presentation. They get a cadence, and they walk in and do the same thing. That's how you eat, their, you know, they eat them for lunch, because they're working on yesterday's messaging. You need to work on today's messaging. Second one is you want to solve the problems that they have now. If you're jotting this down, what problems are they facing now? What uncertainty do they have now? What are they afraid of now? Your, our job as business people is solving other people's problems. We get paid to solve problems. It's math, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, a certain category of business, and we solve problems. So what problems are clients or prospects having now, and how can you solve them better than anybody else? What goals, what goals do your prospects or clients have now? Do they want to get out before things get too bad? Do they want to buy now and they're unconcerned? We need to know what goals are happening now, going back to enter conversations happening in the mind of our prospect now. Because when we do that, we become the differentiator. Last one, really quick, I'm just going through these fast is people will buy from you, use you, sell through you if they feel understood, not if they understand you. Who's watched a speaker before and after they're done speaking, like, damn, she was amazing, but you didn't take a note, you didn't feel the transformation, and then you watch another speaker and you're like, oh my God, she's talking to me. You're writing notes nonstop. You're thinking, one made you understand me. Look what I've done. Look at my accomplishments. Look at my books. Look what I've done. Look how much money I have. The other one is in your head saying, I get you. I know what you want. I know where you've been and I can help you get someplace. So the difference, the subtle difference in what I'm sharing with you is the reason I'm standing up here, the reason I've been blessed to have more success ever than I ever imagined possible is people will buy from you and use you when they feel understood. So ramp up allowing people to understand what you do better than ever before. You guys got that? Okay. And then lastly, before I get to this quick exercise, measure your results, your marketing results, more now than ever before. And you're going to want to obsess on where your energy should be. When things are good and times are good, you might blanket advertising. You might have bus, bus stop signs and you might have email campaigns and lead gen campaigns and things are just cranking. When things get tight, you need to measure your marketing like never before in your life and see what gives you the best ROI. Is it an email campaign? It is, is it a lead? Is it a referral system? And wherever the one, you each have your own unique abilities, you each have your own unique philosophies, find the one that gives you the best ROI and go deeper on it and cut off the ones that aren't working. Because I promise you when this shifts, when it's, when it's all puppies and rainbows, you can just spend money everywhere. I'm telling you, find what's working the best, shut off the rest and go deeper. Take what's working and make it even better. All right, you guys got those three things? Love them more, the art of messaging, and measure your marketing obsessively. Only because I've been in real estate for 30-something years. Thir oh my God, 35 years. Isn't that crazy? I was five um, uh, when I started. Okay, uh, now I want to go through this exercise. You guys ready through it for an exercise? This is usually a half hour. I'm going to do it in about 15 minutes. 
and please write this down. And when I say this, I, I hope I can stress this enough. This exercise is truly something I do four times a year, and I've been doing it for almost 20 years, and I give this exercise credit for all the success, a lot of the success I've had through hard times, through good times, through going through a divorce in my life five years ago, to being in, in love with the woman of my dreams, to everything possible. I give so much of my credit to this exercise. So I, the only reason I stress that is that's how important it is. So you start with, where are you? Where are you? Meaning, why are you in this room? And I'd like to emphasize it by saying, emphasize it by saying, all change starts with being honest. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and go, I'm blessed. Pray to God, I'm blessed, I'm grateful. Yes, you're blessed, you should be blessed, or you are blessed, and you should be grateful. 150,000 people die a day and you didn't. But it doesn't mean you don't want more, that you weren't meant for more. I don't think we want to be at the end of our lives and see a video of the man or woman we could have been. If you have more potential, don't you want to use it? Right? So being honest with yourself, I'm, why are you in this room? Like, wh where am I? You know, I, I'm nervous about where things are going. Am I going to be, be able to maintain my lifestyle? I'm nervous that my old marketing won't reflect into new marketing. I want more freedom. I want more control. I want to do more things with my family. I want to make as much money, but I don't want to work as much time so I could take those trips and not regret when my kids are gone or my grandchildren are older. All change starts with being honest with yourself. Just like GPS. GPS doesn't work if you don't know your starting point. Is that true? So we need our starting point. We've got to drop the pin. So if you're typing it or you're writing it, where are you right now? If you had one emotion, where are you? And then the second thing is where do you want to go? So if you know where you are, where is it that you want to go? You see, as simple as this sounds, and you guys are all incredibly successful and you've had success in multiple areas of your life, even if your success is just starting or you've been crushing it for 35 years, you already know some of this. So. I hope I get to be a reminder service of you today, for you today. Again, I do this four times a year, so if nothing else, it's a reminder service. But most people really don't know where they want to go. Most people know what they don't want. And your brain will default to what you don't want if you're not obsessively thinking about it. I, I'm here with my dear friend, Randy, Randy Garn, an incredible human. And his friend that I've known for a long time and been business partners with at times in my life, his name is Ethan Willis. He's a father of eight. Believe me, I, I go to him. I'm going to have, we're, on a, we're a month away, a month and a half away from our fourth one. I have no idea how he does eight. When I need parenting advice, I go to him. But he's also a church leader and also sold multiple businesses. He's an amazing guy. I'm sharing this because him and a bunch of dads take their, uh, the 15 to 18 year old kids of their church whitewater rafting in Colorado. And I don't know much about whitewater rafting, but they get there and I guess it rained for a week prior and the rapids were a four out of five. All the dads are like, eh, we're going to nuke this. And the, he said a guide comes out with salt and pepper hair and says, dads, chill. Boys, we're going to be fine today because we have the positive point. And Ethan said, all right, I got to see what this guy's got to say. He said, listen, when we're in that raft and we start going down, you're going to watch where I point. And what I'm going to tell you guys to do is just paddle your guts out in the direction I point. He said, it took me a little while to figure this out. He goes, when I first started, I used to say, oh no, there's a down tree. Let's not hit it. And everybody in the raft would look at it and we'd go into it and flip over. <laughs> he said, I'm a slow learner. He said, there'd be a rock. I'd be like, everybody, don't hit that rock. Oh, we won't. Poof, and they flip over. <laughs> He said, don't worry about the rocks, don't worry about the rapids, don't worry about the tree, follow the positive point. And isn't that what we got to do in life? Stuff's going to go sideways, things are going to change, but if we know what we want, if we know where we're going and we focus on it, no one will keep up with you, because most people don't take the time to set this intention. And I learned a little secret. If we're going to really create where it is we want to go, Sometimes, it's really hard to set goals in our busy world. Isn't that true if we're just honest? Anybody have those days where you put your head on the pillow and you're just thanking God you made it through another day? Like, oh, oh my God, this is amazing, right? 
And think of it the other way. We got this, I don't have my phone on me, but there, our phones keep us pretty busy. For those of you old enough to remember the Roadrunner, who remembers the Roadrunner cartoon? Do you remember the Roadrunner would spin, or, or Wiley Coyote, or the, the Tasmanian Devil would spin so fast? For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, just a dust ball. He'd spin so fast, it'd be a dust ball. Sometimes we're walking around in a dust ball with so much crap going on at once that we can't see past this, the, the craziness that's out in front of us, so we can't set our goals. So I'm going to tell you that one of the biggest secrets of setting goals in my life, instead of looking forward, like this is what I want to achieve over the next year, what if... You went ahead a year and you looked back and it was the best year of your life. It was the best year of your life. What would have had to happen to create the best year of your life? What if we were here and it was a one year anniversary and you guys couldn't wait to raise your hand and say, oh my God. In the last year, it was the best year. Not only is my business thriving, did I find my category, I got to go deeper, I spend more time with my family, I feel amazing, I'm using the strategies to get healthier, look better, feel better. I finally have reached this peak. I finally spend my time with my children. I'm finally getting this business to where I know I'm safe no matter what. I don't know what the best year of your life looks like, but you should. But you should. Because most people don't. And what that really is, is a compelling future. You need to take the time, right now we're going through this quick, you need to take the time and say the best year of my life looks like this. This is the money, this is the time, this is the energy, this is the commitment, this is the time I get with family. Circle them, and that becomes your lighthouse. That becomes your compelling future. And how often do you have to sell yourself on that? As much as you need. You might have to read it every day. It's not a New Year's resolution, it is your future. And the, best, the biggest sales job we always have to do is on ourselves. Is that true? Do we know we have to sell ourselves? So if you craft where you want to be in a year and you sell yourself on it, do it every day because that becomes your new lighthouse. That becomes your new compelling future. So if you know where you are, we drop the pin with honesty, and you know where you want to go, it's a year from now and it's the best year of your life, the next thing we have to attach to it is an emotion. And this was the biggest game changer in my career, in my life, is why do you want it? Why are you in this room? Why did you take three days? We're all busy. Why do you want to gain new capabilities? Why are you going to take notes obsessively for three hours when Tony goes on? Why are you want a transformation? Why are you in this room? I did this exercise about 15 years ago with a, a guy I hired. His name was Joe Stump. I don't know if some of you might know Joe Stump. And he had something called the seven levels deep. And I'm not going to go through it today. But basically, if I said, why are you here today? And you said, yeah, I want to take my business to another le next level. Seven levels means, well, why do you want to take your business to another level? Oh, I want more freedom. Why do you want more freedom? And you just keep asking yourself seven times with your answer. And it sounds like, yeah, what's the big deal? Every time I've done it, I did it on stage for five years straight. I'd bring somebody up once a month and watch the transformation because you get out of your head and into your heart. When I did this exercise, I remember he said, why did you hire me? Why did you pay 10 grand for a half a day of consulting? And I remember saying something like, you know, I, wanted, I want my students to be more impacted. I want them to get more results. It's like, okay, great. Why do you want your students to have more results? I remember saying something like, I want to leave a legacy. I don't even remember what the next three things I said. But when I got to the third thing, when I got to the fifth answer, I said something I had never said in my life. I said, I don't ever want to go backwards. I was like, where the hell is that coming from? I just remember, we all have our story. I just remember my mom struggling, working three jobs, coming home at nine o'clock at night. We lived in a trailer park. I remember what it was like not having her there, not having money, kids making fun of you. And I started thinking, hell no. I am not going to go backwards, and I don't want to be the guy that used to be successful. You do not want to be the person that used to do amazing in real estate. Is that true? So sometimes we got to go to the dark side. We got to feel that pain. Like, I am not going backwards. I'm like, damn, that is pretty compelling. But I was only on number five. And he said to me, thanks, Dean. That was a great answer. I remember him saying, he's like, thanks, Dean. I appreciate you being honest. And I could you could tell I was in my heart now. And he said, why don't you want to go backwards? Who has kids? Raise your hand if you have children in your life, right? I remember I said, because I want my kids to have choices. And then, you know, you get emotional. I start thinking about my kids. Now, I'm not talking about 
more entitled children. The world has plenty of them and they're coming on super fast, right? They're going to take over the world soon. That's really scary. But I, wanted, I remember thinking as a child, I didn't have choices. And in my head, I never said those words out loud. I said, I want my children to have choices. And all of a sudden, I was like, that, that's it. I found it. And it was, I was only on number seven. Or I was number six. And he said, OK, Dean, just one more time. He said, why do you want your children to have choices? And I said the words that have changed my life forever. I said, I need to be in control. Now, I don't mean a control freak. We all got our stuff. But my mother and father were really good at, no, they were bad at marrying. They were really good at divorcing. Nine times by the time I was 20. Five and four. I moved 20 times by the time I was 19. You get a step-grandparent that you love and come home from school one day, it's gone. Step-sisters and brothers and schools and a mongoose BMX bike I lost. My stepdad wouldn't let me keep it. All of those things that we have came flooding up in my life and I realized why at that very moment why I worked so hard. I worked so hard because I wanted to be in control. You know what's important to me? We all have our stuff. I have a 15 and a 13 from a previous marriage and I have a two-year-old and a baby on the way. I take my kids to school every day of my life. Every day. And most every day I make them their lunch. I have a million people who do all that, but I make their lunch, I write them a little note, I do it with love, I drive them to school, that half hour to school, I get to know who they like, who they're talking to, their evolution, their growth. There is nobody on this planet ever gonna tell me, sorry, you gotta come in early, you can't take your kids to school. Piss off, right? I pick my kids up from school half the week. Half the week, I'm there at three o'clock outside, now it's two different schools. I've been catching for my daughter as a softball pitcher twice a week for five years. I coach my son's little league team. I get to spend real date nights with my wife. That's who I am at this phase of my life. It might not have been another phase. I wear a great t-shirt every day of my life, no matter where I go. <laughs> why am I saying that? Is because that was my why. I would die before I would let somebody tell me I can't spend time with my children when I want to spend time with them. When you... So the reason I'm saying that today is because when you think I'm a little scared of the shifting economy, what's going to happen? What if interest rates go up? All these things, will I be able to succeed? All of those things are nothing compared to your why if you go deep enough. Because where there's a why, there's a way. And the last thing I'll say is take the time to figure out why, because you're going to be challenged. Things are going to go different. You're going to have to change. You're going to have to face a little uncertainty. You're going to have to pivot. You're going to have to explore. But when you're in your head, I have days that are tough, and I literally say, I am never going backwards. My kids will have choices, and no one's taken away my control. Oh, I could chew through a mountain, break down a brick wall. You guys feel that? So the last piece, if you know where you are, and you know where you want to go, and you know why in your heart, the only thing left is how are you going to get there? There's a gap, right? This is where you are. This is where you want to go. There's a gap. And in that gap is the how. What are the capabilities that you need to go from where you are to where you want to be? Do you need marketing capabilities? Do you need influence capabilities? Do you need to get in the right mindset? What capabilities you need, you need to plug, plug those in and then take the uncomfortable action to move forward. You guys understand that? Guys, when you know where you are, where you want to go, you know why in your heart. Gain the capabilities, take the uncomfortable action, fill the gap, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, gain capabilities like from my dear friend that's coming up here in a little bit. Get inside your head and realize this could be the greatest time to prosper if you just decide it is. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you all. Thank <laughs> you.